All right, thank you, everybody. How are you? All right, thanks, everybody, for uh, attending this uh, April 26, 2021 meeting of the Homewood City Council. Um, we are going to start tonight with a uh, presentation of a governor's proclamation by Representative David Faulkner. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Just go to this this right here, Mr. Yes. Mr. President. That's perfect. Um, members of Homewood and the City Council and the, the Mayor McCluskey, uh, thank you for letting me be here tonight um, to present a resolution that we passed in the out in the legislature that has been signed by the governor commending Dimitri's Barbecue Restaurant in Homewood, Alabama. I was not asked to do this by my friend Sam, who, who owns and runs Dimitri's Barbecue, but I frequent the establishment quite often, and I saw an article, and it occurred to me what a staple this restaurant has been in the Homewood community. And I wanted to recognize him and his family, really, because, I, Sam, I hate to tell you this, but I realize the resolution doesn't mention you. That's okay. And I, and I, and I, feel, I feel terrible about that, uh, but I just realized that today. You know, the hamburger flippers always get left out. Okay. <laughs> and so, but I did want to briefly, because I think this means so much to the Homewood community, uh, what your, your establishment is to this community and I wanted to read this resolution. This is HDR 43 signed by Governor Ivey. Commending Dimitri's Barbecue Restaurant in Homewood, Alabama. Whereas in 1950, Tyke Nakos immigrated from Greece through the port of New Orleans. He held several jobs before he was in a position to launch his own business. He relied on the culinary and business skills he acquired working at a barbecue restaurant in Inslee, Alabama before moving to Homewood to open the El Rancho restaurant in 1961. And whereas following more than a decade of hard work, during which time he helped define what is considered traditional barbecue, Mr. Nakos opened Dimitri's Barbecue Restaurant in Homewood, Alabama, which offered fine food in a family setting to diners throughout the Birmingham metropolitan area. And whereas over the next six decades, Dimitri's Barbecue Restaurant evolved into a landmark in downtown Homewood, became a meeting place for workers to enjoy breakfast on their way to work. The patrons also crowded into the restaurant to enjoy plates of barbecue, sandwiches, salads, and fresh vegetables for lunch and dinner. And whereas Dimitri's Barbecue is now recognized as the oldest restaurant in Homewood, continuously operated by the same family. It continues to have the warm welcome from the Nakos family that was introduced 60 years ago, and it should have said Sam Nakos. Be it resolved by the legislature of Alabama, both houses, therefore concurring that we recognize and commend Dimitri's Barbecue Restaurant on their 60 years of operation and service in Homewood and the Birmingham metropolitan area. And this resolution is offered to them with heartiest congratulations and best wishes for continued success, signed by Governor Kay Ivey. Sam, congratulations, and council, thank you for letting me, Mayor, let me present this tonight to, to Sam. Thank you. Mr. President, one uh, absolutely matter of personal privilege uh, for your next uh, announcement for these Eagle Scouts um, that have achieved this and are all Homewood residents. I just want to say congratulations to these young men um, for this achievement. Um, I try to speak whenever I can and get a certificate of recognition for Eagle Scouts for what they stand for, their value of service primarily. Uh, standing for values of God and country. Um, and it means so much to me to know that we have young people that are still achieving this and holding true to those ideals and particularly their service to their fellow man and their community. And all of them obviously have demonstrated that by becoming Eagle Scouts. So I just want to say congratulations to all of the Eagle Scouts who will be introduced next. 
and let them know that I would love to get you a certificate of recognition from the legislature. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Faulkner. We appreciate it. All right, and with that, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, if you want to come up and talk to us about these Eagle Scouts. No, thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, we would like to, if they would, uh, come up here and stand behind us. First of all, I do want to say thank you to Councillor Andrus and to Councillor Harden for putting this group together. I know it was uh, painstaking trying to get everybody together at once, but if you guys would come up here. Um, we just want you to uh, speak into the microphone, introduce yourselves, tell us a little bit about your projects, because uh, we know everybody would, uh, would certainly like to hear about that. So, And then they're going to also lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Hello, I'm Charlie Farrell, and my project was by the Jefferson County Board of Education. It was a stone monument that um, says Homewood established 1926, I believe, and it's just saying you're entering Homewood and welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm James Spencer, and for my project, I built three uh, garden beds at the West Trinity campus for their food bank. Hi, uh, I'm Patrick Harris, and I built a, a set of stairs uh, on the Smythe Trail at Red Mountain Park. My name's Jack Farrell. Uh, Charlie's my twin, but I built a stone monument on the corner of Point Tiana and Hermosa Drive. It says, Welcome to Homewood. I'm David Kirk, and I built two flag retirement boxes, one of which is actually here at City Hall, and the other is, the, is at the new police precinct um, down in Vestavia Hills. Valley Avenue. Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Will Harden. I built the San Volvo Court in Patriot Park. And we need a picture with their scoutmaster as well. Y'all stay right there. Stay right here. We're do uh, and then Ms. Salter is going to do our invocation, and then y'all can lead us in the pledge. If everyone will please stand. Um, y'all bear with me tonight. Y'all put this on my heart. I'm just going to read a song real quick. I talk fast, so it won't take very long. Um, but we had a wedding here at Rosewood Hall this weekend, or this past week, and just made my heart rejoice to finally be back to some normalness of being able to be people. So I wanted to read a psalm. Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desire with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made his way to, ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him, for he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. 
But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, fear him and his righteousness with their children's children and those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly host, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. Amen. Thank you very much. All right, guys, you're up. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much, and congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rare. All right. With that, we will call this meeting to order. And uh, Ms. Salter, if you will uh, call roll, please. Yes, sir. Uh, Councilor Gwaltney? Here. Councilor Gear? Here. Councilor Alamon? Here. You want to do the invocation next week? Uh, the next council will away, right? <laughs> Councilor Wolverton? Here. Councilor Sims? Here. Councilor Jones? Here. Councilor Smith? Here. Councilor Nelms? Here. Councilor Andres? Here. Councilor Hardin? Here. And President Wyatt? Here. All right, next we have the uh, reading of the minutes from our April 12, 2021 meeting. Uh, I would entertain a motion and a second to dispense with the reading of such minutes that were distributed earlier this week by Ms. Salter and for approval of the same. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Smith, second by Mr. Hardin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is 11 to zero. Which brings us to our next item, uh, board vacancies. Uh, we'll start with the um, Board of Education uh, position for Ward 1. I understand that we've got a nomination, and Mr. Gwaltney, since you are the uh, liaison as well as the, the, one of the Ward 1 reps, I'll let you have the honors. Yes. Uh, we would like to nominate Justin Russell for Ward 1 BOE. All right. We have a nomination for uh, Mr. Russell. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Second from Mr. Alamon. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is 11 to 0. Congratulations to Mr. Russell. Uh, Next, we have uh, a library board position from Ward 3. Uh, I understand we've got a nomination for that as well. Um, Mr. Jones or Mr. Sims? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Wyatt. So we met and conducted interviews last Tuesday, and we would like to make a motion to nominate Dr. Kia Kraft for the role. All right. That is a motion for Dr. Kraft. Second. A second for Mr. Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, and that is also 11 to 0. Congratulations to Dr. Kraft. I'll let them know, sir, with that letter. Thank you very much. And I'm, um, Ms. Ms. Salter, I'm, I'm leaving. And by the way, Homewood is up 3 0. Go, Patriots. Fantastic. Woo. Good luck with the rest of the game. <laughs> 3 0, didn't it just start? Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they've only been playing for like, I mean, very I mean, efficient. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should stay away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Um, Mr. President, if, yes, you, Mr. if you don't mind, um, don't. for board, uh, since we're on board vacancies, um, I have two appointments to the beautification board, um, Alexis McBrayer and Christopher Smith. Uh, both of them have uh, requested to be on the board, and I know they uh, talked to uh, Councillor Sims as well. Um, so if we could get both of them on there, that would be fantastic. All right. Uh, I can't even remember since this board is so new. Do we have to vote on that, or is that it's just a mayor mayoral appointment? It's just a mayoral appointment. Fantastic. So thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I know it's your appointment, but we'll do a letter form and copy it to you. And get some. Please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Uh, we have one addition to the agenda tonight. Uh, this will be added to the committee referral agenda. It is 1804-21. Request for consideration to surplus obsolete and or equipment no longer needed for municipal services brought to us by James Yates, our IT director, assistant city clerk. No. <laughs> Melody Salter, city clerk and assistant finance director. And this will go to uh, the finance committee. And with that, I would entertain a motion and a second for approval of the amended agenda. So moved. Motion by Mr. Second. Gwaltney. Second by Mr. Hardin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is also 11 to 0, which brings us to 10 the. To zero. Oh, I'm sorry, 10 to 0. Thank you. 
Um, which brings us to the consent agenda. Uh, I would entertain a motion and a second for approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Alamon and second uh, by Ms. Nelms. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, that's 10 to zero as well. Which brings us to the old business agenda. 1803-21 public hearing continued from April 12, 2021 at 6 p.m. to permit a front yard fence partially in the right of way along the creek at 624 Forest Drive brought to us by Scott Smith, the homeowner and white few of our BEZ department. We have already had uh, a report from special issues uh, since this was carried over from last week, so we won't bother with that, but uh, with a report and we'll just go straight ahead and I will open this public meeting. And Mr. Pugh, what do you got for us? All right, sir. Well, the attorney there. Um, as you can see on the screen is the uh, proposed and ex uh, the existing there. And then as he slides down, you see the proposed uh, fence that he would like to put along the creek. Um, that is also, that is in the right of way. That's just inside the city right of way. So um, the request is for a front yard fence and we would also need an indemnification agreement to work in the right way. How tall is this fence? I, I'm just noticing a height difference between the existing one and the, the proposed one. The existing fence actually has uh, quite a varied height. It goes from about uh, three feet over there to the right to about six feet over there okay. to the the left where the sidewalk is and I pretty much um, uh, keep that line okay it's, it's level okay so it's just to make sure is it about the same height are you saying it's level with the existing fence yes sir. okay is, is, is that a six foot fence you're gonna put up it's six feet on the left and it gets shorter I see. to the right yeah. okay it follows the existing fence I guess we just really just want to covered up because it, some sections have uh, barbed wire on it and it's just really unsightly. Got it. Okay. And is it, uh, it I'm looking at it, it just look, looks like it's made of wood. Is that? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Any questions? For, well, I'm sorry. Is there anyone else here to speak for or against this item? If not, I'll close the public hearing and take uh, questions or comments from council. I have a question. Mr. President. Yes, sir. Uh, so is the fence at the so what does it look like by the sidewalk is it because that chain link goes on the sidewalk as well right uh, yeah perpendicular would, is there a view so that's just the wooden fence right there as well um, only up until until the sidewalk just as it's pictured here yeah because there's the chain link still right there yeah. oh yeah the uh, in front of the sidewalk would would be the existing chain link. I'd maybe plant a couple of hollies there to okay. take that out. Okay, okay, great, great. I, I thought I might have a better chance of getting it approved if we didn't go all the way to the street. That'll be an improvement on the chain link up, I believe, yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Sir, is that a stained fence? I mean, it looks stained from yes, there. Sir. So you're going to stain the fence that's yes. as opposed to leave it? Yeah, really. I want to be cautious to have it stained, maintained, and not have yeah. it turn into a gray pile of fish. So that's what's off the table. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion to approve the fence as well as the indemnification agreement required. Second. All right. Motion by Mr. Almont, second by Ms. Nelms for approval of the fence pending the uh, indemnification agreement. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That is 10 to zero and approved, and that will be resolution 2152. All right. All right, next item is 220321, public hearing continued from April 12, 2021 at 6 p.m. for consideration of a variance to increase the size of two wall signs at 2719 19th place south brought to us by rod burchell uh, from alpha graphics and wyatt pew um, again this was carried over from last time uh, 
so we've already had the report. Um, the public hearing is still open. Um, so, uh, Mr. Pugh? Yes, sir. The request is, as you see here, um, <clears throat> the downtown district limits the, the height of letters to 24 inches. Um, they're proposing a 27 and a quarter inch tall. That was according to the email that you gave me. Is that, is that correct? Okay. 27 and a quarter inch tall letter max. Okay. And so it's just the size of the letters that's the only variance? Here. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. The, the, sign, the sign itself, as far as the total coverage, is, is within, is, is compliant. Okay. All right. Anyone else here to speak for or against this item? If not, I'll close the public hearing uh, and ask if there are any questions or comments from the council. Yes, I just I have one question. So looking at this building, are there are these two um, tenants going to take up the entire space or is there a third available two -thirds space? Of the space? Two thirds of the space. Okay. The one that's not, not over here is a, will be about the same. Okay. And is it best to handle the consistency and lettering at a later date then? Or is yeah, I think they, that tenant would then need to come back before us to, to get their own variance. Okay, thank you. They're not going to have the same lettering because they're going to be different. Yeah, it could. It, we don't know what they're going to ask for, but it, even in addition to that, I think they've they've got to be the one to request it to receive it. Mr. Jones, I, I was just wondering uh, uh, why you couldn't be within the size that we allow. Well, we What's your feeling. Uh, we did re we researched it, and we were we thought we were inside, it and we did not realize it was a special, um, you know, area for a different you know height difference for uh, the area downtown so we were within the I think it's 35 square feet or whatever it is and we, we were within that but we were not when we made the sign we were just a little bit of you know, larger letters okay so there's really it, I mean so it's really not an undue hardship it just you that's just how it was designed not it knowing was design, it was designed yeah, it's just, okay so could you live with what's within the sign ordinance, I guess that's my question. The sign's made and it would be costly to remake the sign. So you're saying it's already yes. been produced. I believe it's yes. already been produced. It's, just, it's not up yet, but it's already it's not, been it's not. It's not installed, so it's, it's just not, it's produced, it was, yes. So you're gonna be angry at us if we don't approve this, <laughs> it sounds like. Uh, well, the owner will be angry. He yeah, right. Yeah. Well, the owner someone, will be angry. Well, now. someone's gonna be angry. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I hate, I mean, I mean, I hope, in the future, you, you uh, yeah, we, 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 that we now know what the ordinance is, and we'll be we'll definitely stay within that if any other business comes up. Well, well that's I, unfortunate. I, I'm with Walters a little bit. We make these sign ordinances, and we seem to be constantly saying, Oh, God, we're gonna give a variance to it. But, uh, I know where this building is, and the signage isn't, you know, it's on a side street. I, I, I don't think it's gonna affect a lot of folks. Probably help them just they moved off the main drag onto a side street, so probably help their business to have a bigger sign. And the owner's not here, I think. Yeah, where is he? Where is he? The owner's not here. Well, yeah. could you come up and talk to us? <laughs> you're, you're making him answer all the tough questions here. <laughs> Well, the design of the logo. I'm sorry, can you just say your name for the record to sign in? Yes. I'm Norman James. Uh, yeah, what, everything he said. In addition, the way the logo is designed, some of the letters are, sh are shorter than the others. Um, so certainly, if we would have known this, we could have rearranged that and you know made that happen earlier we really would like the same sign that we had on the existing building we'd love that size but we realize that's extremely uh, larger than what we're used to grandfathered in. <laughs> so so uh anyway I, we're just asking for the you know would love to have the variance we we don't feel like it's too far out of whack but we do understand now the process a little better and would ask for forgiveness and and you know allow us Okay, thank, thank you. All right, any other questions or comments? 
Then I would entertain a motion. Second. Second. All right, uh, motion by Ms. Nelms. To for grant the variance for the um, size, the 27 and a quarter, is that correct? Um, for the size of the variance. All right, and uh, I believe we had a second from Ms. Sims. Mr. Sims, excuse me. I was actually thinking of something else. Did I close the public hearing? Does anyone remember? I did. I have 623. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, you did. For the record, yes. Fantastic. All right, so we have a, a motion from Ms. Nelms and a second from Mr. Sims. Excuse me, Mr. Sims, I apologize. All right, uh, any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, and that uh, is approved Thank 10 to zero. Thank you. And will be resolution 2153. Thank you, appreciate it. All right, that brings us to our next item, 020421, public hearing set for April 26, 2021, for consideration of a variance to the sign ordinance to add one additional wall sign at 2713 18th at the Street South, brought to us by West Daniel of Daniel Sign Company and Wyatt Pugh. Uh, and we will start with a report from special issues, and I believe Ms. Andrus is going to give us that. Correct. Um, the committee met, and after a report from Greg Cobb, voted five to zero to refer this item to the full council without recommendation pending the public hearing. The motion was made by myself and seconded by Councilor Alimon. Thank you very much. All right, so with that, we will open this public hearing. And once more, Mr. Pugh. Yes. As you may recall, uh, Mr. Cobb came in and explained that this sign was approved under the old sign ordinance and um, in terms of the size. But uh, so this is a request for one additional sign that goes on the other side of the wall. Same sign just same, on the other side. Same sign mirrored on the other side. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Is there anyone else here to speak for or against this item? If not, then I will close the public hearing and ask if there are any questions or comments from the council. And if there aren't any, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All right, motion by Mr. Alamon for approval, I'm assuming. For approval, yes. And a second from Mr. Jones. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, and that is also 10 to zero. And will be twenty one fifty four. Still one stronger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next item: O three O four twenty one. Public hearing set for tonight for consideration of a fence setback variance at two hundred Mars Boulevard. Brought to us by Wyatt Pugh. And I believe one other person. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble. <laughs> State your name, please. <laughs> Justin Hefner, owner, resident, 200 Morris Boulevard. All right, and we, uh, this, uh, this item also is coming from special issues, so we'll have a report, Ms. Andrews. The committee met and voted five to zero to refer this item to the full council without recommendation pending the public hearing. The motion was made by myself and seconded by Councilor Sims. All right, thank you. With that, I will open the public hearing on this matter. And uh, Mr. Pugh. As you can see on the screen, there's a uh, <clears throat> mock-up of what the request looks like. Uh, they want to extend the fence out um, on, on up closer to the front of the house to encompass the uh, deck area. It would be an 11, I believe I said it was an 11 and a half foot uh, variance request, side setback request. All right. Is there anyone else here to speak for or against this item? If not, then we will close the public hearing and see if there are any questions or comments from council. And if there aren't, then I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Ms. Andrus, second by Mr. Gwaltney. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That is 10 to zero and will be 2155. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Hefner. All right, that brings us to 130221, public hearing set for May 10th, 2021 at 6 p.m. for consideration of changes to the landscaping and tree requirements. 
Marked by Councilors Gwaltney and Andrus. This was referred from the Planning Commission on a 5-0-1 favorable vote. Uh, so this will um, just be carried over tonight uh, and we will hear it at our next meeting on the 10th. Next item, 050421, public hearing set for May 10th, 2021 at 6 p.m. for consideration to rezone two small strips of land resulting from one resurvey. Request to rezone a strip of land at 316 Sterrett Avenue to be added to 320 Sterrett Avenue from PR1 to NPD and to rezone a strip of land at 320 Sterrett Avenue, Avenue to be added to 316 Sterrett Avenue from NPD to PR1. Uh, the applicant is Ronald Van Erf uh, and Charles Williams. Uh, this also comes from the Planning Commission on a 9-0 to zero favorable vote in favor of the rezone. Uh, this will also be carried over for our next meeting on the 10th. Next item, 060421, public hearing set for May 10th, 2021 at 6 p.m. for consideration to declare property at 307 West Glenwood Drive, a public nuisance brought to us by Wyatt Pugh. This will also be carried over to the 10th. 070421, public hearing set for May 10th, 2021 at 6 p.m. for consideration to declare the property at 809 Columbiana Road, a public nuisance brought to us by Wyatt Pugh. This one will also be carried over to the 10th. So get ready for the 10th. Yeah. Have a few public <laughs> hearings. All right, uh, next item, 130321, request to hear proposal from Avenue regarding delinquent business license recovery for out of town business. Business is brought to us by Councilor Walter Jones and Robert Burgett, our finance director, as well as Mel Salter, our city clerk. Uh, this item was carried over from uh, our April 12 meeting. Um, Mr. Jones, would you mind giving us a refresher on the report uh, from that from Finance Committee? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. President. The uh, the Finance Committee had uh, had met uh, previously and voted five to zero to recommend approval of this item uh, pending review from Mr. Kendrick, and uh, uh, we carried it over at, at the last uh, council meeting. Uh, we had we had some changes that needed to be made. Uh, that Mr. Kendrick recommended, so they, they, the contract looks good now, so uh, we would go back with that same motion uh, uh, from finance. Okay, so with that motion coming from finance, uh, are there any other questions or comments? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, and that is also 10 to zero, and will be resolution 2156. Next item, 250417, request for consideration of 18th Street Revitalization Project, uh, brought to us by Britt Thames. Um, we have a report from finance. Uh, yes, that. sir, Mr. President. Uh, the uh, Finance Committee met on April 19th, uh, voted five to zero to refer this item back to the full council uh, without recommendation uh, pending the report from Mr. Kendrick. All right. And Is there a motion to go into executive session? I would move that we go into executive session. Second. All right, motion by Mr. Jones, second by Ms. Andrus. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Kendrick, you want to tell us what we put our limitation on it? It would be limited to the discussion of the purchase or sale of real estate. All right. Negative public discussion of which might have a negative impact on the value. Thank you very much. All right, we will be back in about 10, 15 at the most minutes. Uh, Mr. President? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I'll move that we go back into regular session. All right, second. we have a motion from Mr. Jones, second from Mr. Harden. Is that you? To move back into regular session. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Right, oh, that sorry, is, uh, Jones and Harden. Okay, thank you. And that is nine to zero. Um, Who are we missing? Wolverton is uh, still making his way back. Okay. All right, uh, with that, um, Mr. Kendrick, will you uh, give us a report on your efforts? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, since, uh, I guess, about a month ago, I was asked to contact certain property owners dealing with the 18th Street project. Since then, I've met with and had discussions with several of the property owners. Uh, two property owners that we were, I'd like to talk about tonight is Ed's Pet World, it's track number seven, and uh, the pro property adjacent to that is uh, 
the barber shops owned by Mr. George Barber. Uh, in our discussions with George Barber's representatives, the mayor and I met with them here in City Hall, and we've made progress and essentially have an agreement as to the price and the timing of the, of the proposal. There are some terms of the, of the proposed contract that we need to get worked out to make sure that ALGOT will approve the contract. And I've been in consultation with Keith Smith, the project, uh, engineering, project engineer on this, to make sure that he's comfortable with, with the terms and conditions we've worked out. But that's hopefully can be resolved here in the next couple of days. Uh, the, the other property is Ed's Pet World. We've had discussions and met on site with Keith, myself, the attorney for uh, Eddie Crosby and the son who runs the business. Mr. Crosby's out of the country and uh, not available, at least not available to us. We've had discussions about that set for what ongoing two or three weeks now. I was hoped I had expected to get a, a proposal from them last week. I received one this afternoon, late, and uh, it's not really what we had ever talked about. It had some terms, the price that they, that had been uh, praised by the state was uh, half of what they put in their proposal, and it had some other terms and conditions that as it relates to the length of the, converse, of the construction period and, and things that Mr. Strickland says he has to have as a minimum to be able to accomplish the work. If we, we need to understand we're just now acquiring temporary construction units to build the sidewalk. We're not taking or invading anyone's property. We're just simply asking their permission and authorization to essentially allow us to build the sidewalks on the city's property. And Mr. Strickland is of the opinion that we need some ability to get on that property to properly construct safely those sidewalks. So um, I'd recommend to you, and I've proposed a resolution, that you'd authorize me to continue to negotiate with Ed's Pet World and hopefully make some resolution, but if not, to authorize the condemnation of that temporary construction easement if and when, uh, in consultation with the mayor and the president of the council, we don't feel like we're making any substantial progress to continue to delay the, the agreement. And I've prepared a resolution and presented it to you with uh, materials that would simply authorize the continued negotiation and or, if necessary, the condemnation of those temporary construction easements for that parcel property. All right. Um, and let me just make sure that we all understand a couple of things. And Mr. Kendrick, you can correct me if I'm wrong about any of this. What we're talking about is essentially a temporary condemnation. In other words, we're not taking any land from them. We're just this condemnation would be temporary, allow us to work on their land, and then the land would go back to them at the end. Is that correct? That's yes, correct. We have to put it back in substantially the same or better condition. It's, it's, very, it's a very normal process when you're building a public improvement project on, on our right-of-way, but in order to, to build that properly and safely, we have to have some time where we're on a private property to be able to construct, properly construct the sidewalks. Mr. Strickland's here, he might have a better way to express that, but if this is simply a temporary use of someone's property to build these public improvements, which would, as soon as the construction is in place, then we certainly would remove and repair any, any damage or any harm that we might have caused the property. Because all of the, and Mr. Strickland, you can correct me if I'm wrong, all of the actual improvements are within the right of way, correct? correct. They are right on the edge of the right of way line. Okay. So everything that's permanent is in our right of way. This is just about a, a temporary condemnation to allow us to work on their property is so it? that we can add sidewalks uh, and some parking to downtown Homewood on our right of way. Correct. Everything that's constructed is on the city right of way. And this is simply to allow us to, some opportunity to, to encroach possibly on private property for a temporary period of time just during the construction of the sidewalks in this case. And secondly, nothing about this action would prohibit you from continuing your negotiations Absolutely. with Ed's Pet World and or and even reaching a resolution if that can be done. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and, and I think everyone's hope is that, that that's what will happen, is that those negotiations will continue and, and will be fruitful. 
Um, but if, if not, that uh, this is a step that can be taken temporarily. Um, one other uh, point, uh, as I understand it from your report, with the other properties, we're, we are making progress. We've gotten the two big items, it sounds like, done of, of cost, of price, and, and of length of time. We're simply working out some details, uh, and we certainly would hope that those uh, negotiations would continue to be fruitful, reach a resolution, and that we could avoid having to take this step with any of them if we can. And, and if we if we can't, we can't. But but based on how the negotiations are going to this point, that uh, we're hopeful that that will be able that we'll be able to continue to, uh, and reach a resolution with those. Parties. I, I think that's a fair summary. All right. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Mr. Sims. Yes, I just have a point of clarification of something that Mr. Kendrick said in his summary. So in talking about with, in negotiation with Ed's Pet World, um, could you please restate where you're at on the negotiation with them for pricing? It, it sounded like you said half and I didn't, maybe I misunderstood that. The, the price that was put, I received a proposal this afternoon, okay? We had hoped to have something yesterday, or excuse me, last week, last Wednesday. Uh, the, the price put in the proposal I received today was uh, approximately double, almost double the price that was uh, the appraised value based on the work that had been done by Keith and the negotiators that the city had, and Aldot had hired previously. It, I, I think it was the state was half of. The appraised value was approximately a half of what okay. the value what, what they put in their, their proposal. Thank and you. That's why I just wanted to clarify that yeah. point. Thank you. And we had no discussions about a different price, although they have told me in the past that they want to get their own appraisal and their own survey. I think I've reported that to you, Council. All right. Any other questions or comments? If not, I would entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Jones. Yeah, I'll, I'll move for the resolution to recommend the condemnation for temporary construction easement for track number seven for the 18th Street project um, with the stipulation that Mr. Mr. Kendrick um, uh, made just earlier. Second. All right, motion from Mr. Jones, second from Ms. Andrus. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's 10 to zero and will be resolution 2157. Nine, nine to zero. I'm sorry, I, I thought Andrew came back in, I apologize. Nine to zero. Resolution 2157. All right. Just track seven. Yes, yes, just track seven. Uh, all right, 040321, bid opening set for April 19, 2021 at 431 p.m. for Mamie L. Foster Rosedale Drive Intersection Improvement Project brought to us by Wyatt Pugh. Um, do we have oh, yeah, a report? report. We have a, we did. a, a a report from finance I, I think we start we've got two things we got to do one is to amend the budget and then for uh, actual approved acceptance of the bid is Correct. that right okay very good uh, yes sir mr. president the uh, the first uh, resolution would be uh, to to amend the uh, the budget in the amount of uh, 142,384 uh, to be paid out of uh, bond fund 26 and that's a line item 26-11-589145 so that, that would be the first uh, recommendation. And do you want to? Yeah, why don't we go ahead and first? take that one up? Okay. And, and so we have a motion from finance on, on that. Any questions or comments? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is nine to zero and will be 2158. And then we'll go back to Mr. Jones uh, for the bid. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. President. Uh, again, we uh, met on the. Um, on the 19th of April, 5 to recommend accepting the bid uh, from uh, Dunn Construction. All right, so we also have a motion from finance on that. Any questions or comments from the council? And to note, they were the lowest responsible and responsive bidder. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That is nine to zero as well and be 2159. 
brings us to 010321, request for consideration to add a crosswalk between 232 and 236 Hall Avenue at the end of the cut through for the neighborhood. Uh, brought to us by Mario Neves and Councillor Alomar. Um, and we will start with a report from finance. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. President. The uh, committee met voted five to zero to recommend approval funding up to $4,000 from the capital projects sidewalks repair line item. So five to zero from finance. All right. And uh, Mr. Kendrick, if you could give us a first reading, please. Yes, there's an ordinance to provide for the installation of pedestrian crosswalk on Hall Avenue in the city. Be ordained by the city as follows. The Chief of Police will be directed to install a pedestrian crosswalk between 232 and 236 Hall Avenue at the end of the cut through for the neighborhood. Section two, the this ordinance shall authorize the installation of an ADA ramp at the location of the pedestrian crosswalk authorized by paragraph one above. And the council does appropriate a sum up to $4,000 to be paid from account number 1211581733 sidewalk repairs for the cost of the installation of the ramp. Section three, that all drivers and motor vehicles as defined in the highway code shall yield to pedestrians located in the crosswalk as defined above. Section four, the person violating the provision of this ordinance shall be punished as provided by ordinance section 1-8 of the code of ordinances upon a conviction. Section five, all of the ordinances and parts contrary thereof or hereof are repealed. Section six, any part of provision of the ordinance declared to be unconstitutional and violated by a court of competent jurisdiction shall not affect the other provisions of the ordinance. Section seven, the ordinance shall become effective immediately upon its adoption by the city council approval by the mayor's otherwise becoming law. All right, thank you, Mr. Kendrick. Any questions or comments? If not, I would entertain a motion and a second for unanimous consent. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Almond, second by Mr. Wolverton. And roll call vote, please, Ms. Salter. And the record turn Mr. Wolverton is out. <laughs> <laughs> he raised a second. Okay, Councilor Gwaltney? Yes, ma'am. Councilor Gear? Yes. Councilor Alamon? Yes. Councilor Wolverton? Yes. Councilor Sims? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor Smith is absent. Councilor Nelms? Yes. Councilor Andrus? Yes. Councilor Harden? Yes. And President Wyatt? Yes. All right, so that is 10 to zero. And now I've entertained a motion and a second for approval. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Alamon, second by Mr. Wolverton. And another roll call vote, please, Ms. Salter. All right, Councilor Gwaltney? Yes, ma'am. Councilor Gear? Yes. Councilor Alamon? Yes. Councilor Wolverton? Yes. Councilor Sims? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. And Councilor Smith is still absent. Councilor Nelms? Yes. Councilor Andrus? Yes. Councilor Harden? Yes. And President Wyatt? Yes. All right. 2804. So that is approved and will be ordinance 2804. Next item, 100421, request for consideration for a tent variance for Trinity Methodist Vacation Bible School, uh, brought to us by Councillor Smith. And we will start with a report from special issues. Ms. Andrews. Committee met and voted 5 to 0 to recommend approval. The motion was made by myself and seconded by Councillor Aleman. All right. So we have a motion from special issues. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's 10 to 0 and is 2160. All right, which brings us to 040421, request for consideration to rezone the northern portion of 260 Oxmoor Road from GERD to C5. The applicant is Chelsea Payne uh, from Massey Stotzer and Nichols um, to permit the construction of a three story storage facility. Planning Commission had a vote of nine to zero, favorable recommendation of the rezone. Uh, I was trying to say, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, I was saying Ms. Andrews was going to report. I was trying to say, Ms. Andrews, you have a report? Yep, sure. Mm -hmm. The committee met and after hearing from Mr. Mike Patel at 260 Oxmoor Road, voted five to zero to recommend setting a public hearing for May 24th, 2021 at 6 p.m pending receipt of the development plan and renderings of ingress and egress. The motion was made by Councilor Gwaltney and seconded by Councilor Nelms. The item was then carried over for further review in committee. All right, so uh, we will set this public hearing for May 24th at 6 p.m. All right, that brings us to the committee referral, the amended committee referral agenda. Uh, I would entertain a motion and a second for approval of the amended committee referral agenda. Motion, second. Motion from Mr. Wolverton, second from Mr. Gwaltney. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Right. It's 10 to 0. 
brings us to other new business. 140421 request to set a public hearing for consideration to permit a front yard fence at 1850 Lake Ridge Road, brought to us by Chase Bowers and Wyatt Pugh. We will set that public hearing for May 10th at 6 p.m. 150421 request to set a public hearing for a variance to the sign ordinance at 2831 Linden Avenue, brought to us by Michael Disco and Wyatt Pugh. Uh, this will go to, it's also going to Special Issues Committee. Um, we will also set that public hearing for May 10th at 6 p.m. 160421 request for consideration to appoint the city arborist brought to us by uh, the mayor who I believe had to step out. Uh, Ms. Anders, do you have I do. something yes. on that? Yep. Thank you. Uh, mayor McCluskey uh, would like to appoint Abraham Odrazine as our new city arborist replacing Henry Hughes. All right. Uh, so Abraham, what was his last name? Um, Odrazine, O-D-R-E-Z-I-N. So as I understand this, uh, this is um, a mayoral appointment uh, and that we will need to then, uh, the city will enter into a contract with uh, his entity. Um, Mr. Kendrick, would you mind putting together that contract? Sure. And that, that contract will then come back before us for approval. So I don't think there's any action that we actually have to take tonight. All right, and that takes us to 170421, request for consideration of approval of vouchers for the period of April 13, 2021 through April 16, 2021. Mr. Jones. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. President, I yield to Mr. Harden, who, who worked on the vouchers this time. Yes, um, I did review all the vouchers, and uh, I am approving the vouchers as, as they were submitted to me. I'm take it that's a motion. That is a motion to approve the vouchers. I apologize. That's no. okay. Or Do we have a second? Second. Second, second for Mr. Aye. Jones. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, it's also 10 to 0, and that is 2161. All right. Which brings us to the end of the agenda. Uh, as I said, the mayor had to step out, so uh, we will skip over him and uh, start with Mr. Gwaltney. Yeah, the mayor stepped over and said um, he had nothing to report this evening that he had to go tend to an emergency. So um, keep him in your thoughts. Hopefully it's not family related. Uh, I don't have any official announcements this evening. I will say I have the pleasure of having a cleaned off public safety agenda. So I do not have to set the public safety meeting. Um, that's it. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Gear. Uh, yes, I'd just like to once again thank all the Ward 1 residents who applied for the uh, Board of Education spot. Um, thank you all six of you for applying. We appreciate that. And then the second thing is um, uh, Yoga in the Park uh, continues this uh, Saturday at Spring Park. We had our first Yoga in the Park a couple of weeks ago. What was it last weekend? Or two, maybe two weeks ago very successful in Spring Park, and uh, we're just continuing that. Jeremy Love uh, has gotten together with a few others, and uh, uh, there was a great group, people all around uh, Homewood. Uh, so on May, May the 1st, uh, same day as we love Homewood Day, 8 a.m., yoga in the park, bring a, bring a mat or a towel, and uh, join us. And, so, and then on May the 15th, We'll be, still be at Spring Park, but it'll be in the afternoon at 5 p.m. So, um, lots of fun. That's it. Thank you very much. Trauma. I have nothing to report today. I'm just uh, happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> We're happy to have you. <laughs> Mr. Wolverton. I just want to, this is uh, the month of birthdays in my family so just a happy birthday to my brother and my mom who had birthdays in the last week or so uh, my brother did fly into town from DC uh, over the weekend and so we got to celebrate with him last night so um, other than that uh, we do need to set public works and do we have uh, did we say 7 30 or 8 o'clock on Thursday for our or Wednesday for our forum whichever one you works better for you let's do 8 o'clock okay so we are having our war 2 virtual town hall um, Wednesday at 8. Um, and then Public Works. 5.30. 5.30? We'll be at 5. 5.30. Okay. 
Okay. Public Works 530. Um, Mr. Kendrick, do you know if we've made any progress on any of the uh, any of the items that are on there right now? Whether the the AT and T people were supposed to come to your committee meeting. Right, on. right, right. Because they weren't able to come last right. week. The ceasefire, uh, the spire, I believe they'll have it worked out by then. Okay, so we'll we'll set it for 15 minutes. Hopefully that's enough. Do I need to contact somebody from AT and T or you or? Oh, why? It's spoken to them at the last meeting to ask to carry it over. Right. So he's talking to me. I'll just I'll just make a note to ask him. Okay. Sounds great. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Sims. Yes, thank you, President White. Um, so I just want to give an update on the beautification board. First of all, thanks to the mayor for appointing two new members. Also, I wanted to let you know there's uh, three th events coming up I wanted to make note of. May 3rd, uh, there will be a beautification award presentation at Edgewood Station at 10 a.m. for the quarter two beautification award. For Saturday, May 8th, there will be a cleanup uh, organized around Griffin Cle Creek Sorry, from 8 to 10 a.m. Um, that actually, there's some information online on the Beautification Board Facebook page for a Sign Up Genius and other details, uh, but volunteers can meet that morning near Shades Crest Dental over on Broadway Park. And then also on May 10th, which is a Monday, the Beautification Board will have their next meeting, and that will be in person here at City Hall at noon. So um, thanks for allowing me to provide those updates, and I'd just also like to say thank you to all our board applicants who interviewed this past week. Uh, both enjoyed having Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday with my fellow counselors um, interviewing residents interested in those roles for the library board and the school board, and really just continually impressed by the wealth of talent and expertise and commitment that our citizens have in making our city better. And we're really looking to um, find opportunities for everybody who's interested to get engaged going forward. So we'll be reaching back out to a lot of the applicants. Uh, but again, just thanks to everyone who came, um, submitted their interest in those positions, and we're really um, you know, proud to be of such part of such a great city which is united to make home what the best it can be so thanks all right thank you mr sims uh mr jones yeah uh, i talked to mr sims on friday and we we're thinking well, what are we going to do tonight if we're not going to be at city hall <laughs> tonight we spent the whole week at city hall and uh there, there were some fantastic uh people we we interviewed and it made me realize i, I have a lot more to do in my life uh, to, to accomplish because somebody had 15 page inter I mean, resume so I was like I've got a lot more work to do um, I, I wanted to uh, just uh, thank publicly uh, Henry Hughes and as we're talking about the arborists um, this man uh, has given so unselfishly to Homewood over the years and if you look back at all the things he's done I mean his passion for keeping our canopy, uh, planting more trees in 2019. We, we, I mean, there's been so many initiatives that we've worked on together with him, and he's gone out to look at trees all over the city, and, and I just want to thank him for that. And uh, I know we'll probably want to thank him in a, a more formal way, but I, I just wanted to, uh, to say thank you. And then lastly, I'm so sorry I'm going to miss the uh, We Love Homewood parade, and I know Ms. Salter's uh, uh, department is working Feverishly Spoiler on. alert, you can't, I'm going to ask him, can I talk to him at the very end for five minutes so you can't tell him what the theme is. You might okay, you can that. have one minute, but not five minutes. <laughs> uh, no, five I'm seconds, just, I'm going to talk fast. No, I'm just teasing. But no, I just, I, I'm, I'm sorry. It, it seems like everything is happening on, on May the 1st. Uh, and my, my daughter's graduating from Alabama, so I'm going to be there. So I will miss all of you, but I hope, hope you have a wonderful parade. And, I was going to miss last year because my daughter was graduating from Alabama, well, but the pandemic messed both things up. So she didn't well, get she walk. only got to pick uh, four people to go to the graduation, so she picked her family, so I thought that was really nice of her. So, anyway. Miss <laughs> 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 Nelms. Yeah. Hello. Well, um, there's about 20 days away from All Things Ward for Homewood newsletter and um, about a month or two away for our All Things Homewood town hall 
um, but um, those are in the works. And Councillor Smith um, addressed a speed beacon on Salter that you may have noticed has been out for a while and she got with Randy and they got that fixed. So if you see that it, that is not fixed, please let us know, but it should be up and going. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. Ms. Andrews. Um, well, first, let me set special issues for Ms. Smith. Um, Councilor Wolverton, how long do you need for public works? No, 15. 15, so I'm gonna set special issues for 545. Um, and then I have a question. I really just have three public hearings, so um, really, do I need to set PND? I don't think I do. Uh, probably not if you've sent all of them out, and I think you have. So, probably. Well, we have the one for the Massey, but it's not for the 24th. That one's still in committee, but it's not for the 24th. Yeah, it's up to you, because you've still got to send that one out, because uh, we've just set the public hearing in it, but it's up to you as to whether you want it next week or the... I'll you, say let's not set P&D next week. How about all right. that? I'll say that. So I've got special issues at 545, but I'm not going to set P and d about that. Um, our unified command call today, um, the news remains good. Our numbers still steadily declining. Um, however, the people taking their vaccines have also declined. So, you know, spread the word. Um, I took my boys to the airport today to get shot number two. Uh, sat, in the car, sat next to Will Harden and Suzanne Harden in their car. Um, but the whole thing took 20 minutes. I mean, really, it's so easy and there's so much capacity there. Um, They've got um, a, a Spanish speaking line that's taken a lot of calls. Um, they have the capacity, at, even at the airport, to take 15 to 1700 calls a day. So really there's just a lot of capacity out there and um, we really need everyone to get vaccinated so we can move on. Um, that's really all I have. We, we had a nice, successful, happy, healthy prom. Now we're moving on to graduation. That's next, but honors and graduation. So, yep. Um, these kids are. That's, it, that's all I got. I just looked at your agenda. You sent all the rest of them out without the ones on May 10th. Mm -hmm. You sent all, the, all those out without recommendation. You just got that 24. So okay. you're just gonna wait and do it. On the yeah, it's just waiting. Okay. On that. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I've got a couple of things. Um, one, uh, I would like to set unless there's any big problems. I would like to set the committee as a whole uh, meeting for um, the mid-year review for uh, May 10th at five o'clock, uh, which will be right before council. Um, if everyone can show up an hour early, uh, then we'll set that for then. This um, will make council work session on May the 10th at five. Yep. Uh, next, a uh, couple items that have, that have already at least been mentioned. Uh, the. Exceptional Foundation's Chili Cook-Off is on May 1st. Um, so uh, if you, it always, it's always a good time, um, but you gotta get out there in the morning because you gotta get back for all the We Love Homewood Day stuff in the afternoon, being on the same day. Uh, we will have a float in the parade, which I'm not gonna steal Miss Salter's thunder. She, I'm gonna let her talk about it. I'm just going to point out one thing, uh, that, that we're only going to have counselors on it again uh, because of COVID. Uh, we don't want to crowd the crowd it too much. Um, so uh, no kids uh, or families uh, or friends uh, this time around. And hopefully by the time we get to another parade, then we can have the kids back on because they're more fun to have them up there anyway. But uh, we will hold off at least one more time. You should just put kids and no counselors. <laughs> Agreed. That would be more entertaining <laughs> and get more applause, probably. Um, what? Sloths. Sloths are still fine. Yes, sloths are still fine. <laughs> That's why we're discussing the theme in just one second. Five oh, seconds. okay. <laughs> um, lastly, uh, I would just um, echo what's been said uh, about the Board of Education and the library positions. Um, thank you to everyone who applied. Uh, it is a wonderful thing that they give us to, uh, that they give us such a tough job of choosing between well-qualified people who want to serve the city. Uh, that's a wonderful thing for Homewood. Um, so thank you to all of them and congratulations to uh, the appointees. Um, I'm excited about what um, both of them will do uh, moving forward um, and I'm certainly excited about what Justin has done in the past as well. Uh, so we look forward to that. 
And with that, uh, I will point out that uh, Mr. Jones said it, but I don't know that he actually formally did it. So just to make sure finance is set for five o'clock. Um, and with that, we are done tonight. Well, she, I'm gonna let her talk. Do you wanna talk before I adjourn or you wanna talk that? You well, let him talk. I'm, I'm not gonna give it all away because if Debbie Fout has a float, we're very competitive as Robert and I are very competitive about who gets the float. She always beats me. And y'all know I don't have a I don't I'm not competitive, but I don't have a creative bone in my body. A couple years ago, it was really, it was it was set for May fourth, and I came up with this myself, not myself. May the fourth be with you. Uh -huh. And then Star Wars, we actually got the float got decorated, out. and we got rained out. Yep. So that was so I asked Berkeley if there was any theme, and Rusty Holly, they said no, and I was like, can I do May the fourth be with you again on May first? Berkeley said yes, but I, everybody thought it was a stretch. We do have a theme, but I'm going to tell y'all offline on the on so in case Debbie listen. Um, but but and I actually researched this myself, and then later y'all have to ask Mr. Kendrick about it because he gave me some insight about the theme. Um, he, I, he didn't know what I picked, but y'all wear spring colors. Spring colors, got it. Wear spring colors. I have no idea what she's talking about. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do, because we talked about it today. But I will, I will send you an email and I'll send you an invite. But uh, apparently the lineup is at 5 p.m. at the library, Saturday, May 1st, and the parade kicks off at 6. And we can't throw candy or any tchotchkes this year. No duckies, but maybe next time for the Christmas. But yep. we can't throw anything. But we did get a, it's going to be moving, so we get a trailer, I mean, a record like normal and all that just for y'all to send me. But spring colors. Spring colors. And I'll send you an email. And, when, and once you get the theme, we have a thing. Talk, to talk about it with other people at your own risk, because if Debbie finds out, exactly. Melody is coming to get you. It says she'll be listening on Zoom. <laughs> she might not even have a float. I don't know. But she wins every year at Christmas, I know, and we're very competitive. The, the spring colors constitute pastels or? Yes, okay. preferably. Okay. You better watch that user's iPhone right there. About <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what well, well, we're telling Pink coming soon. But I will tell you that I actually had to Google what can I come up with because May the fourth be with me will never be that good again, and I don't know if I'll still be working here retired before it comes again. <laughs> before the fourth comes around on the right day. And we even had it decorated with Han so with the uh, with all the Star Wars characters and everything, and it got rained out. It was just so sad. It was. I remember. President Wyatt, I, I did have one other thing I forgot. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Broadhead and um, Chief Hill wanted to make sure that everybody knew that they were opening an active invitation for anybody to come out and go through their performance test um, now they're, they're doing it apparently every morning at 6 30. So they are they're right i did go out there last tuesday morning and it was it was challenging and it was fun and so i would challenge any, any one of you to join me next friday at 6 30. I'm gonna oh are you it. doing it i'm going to i'll be back there then. Lo love the fire department <laughs> i'm gonna load up I might station three. I might come and watch. I mean, I'm pumped about this <laughs> until, I, until I fall down. Um, the firefighter fitness exam is that? What yeah, it's their fitness exam. So the, until they I embarrass are, myself. They are actively training for it. I think that they will all do it as a department by the end of May. Um, but they're they're practicing every morning for anybody that wants to show up. And so we show up to watch or participate. No, you you, you show up to participate. Yeah. Oh. Or watch. Full, full gear and performance. <laughs> That's right. That sounds like fun, doesn't it? All right. Well, thank you, everybody. That will conclude our meeting. We will be adjourned until May 10th.